Yes, thank you. Oh, thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> yes, thanks uh, uh, to this. Uh, you know, I always have the problem that Wikipedia is very confusing. And uh, for my own lessons and for other reasons, I have uh, written a book about wiki theory in a certain way, taking wiki studies serious as as a topic by itself, as a discipline or field of research by itself. Um, yes, this uh, are some a little thing about me. And we want to talk about these issues. And uh, um, I should lock the door when I say the word theory, but you will see, I hope it will give a little bit overview. And then we can see at what points we can talk about AI. So I'm just making suggestions, just giving some ideas without being exhaustive. Yes, I'm talking about this, not too surprising. And AI images, uh, we will see that's a larger block, but maybe every time. Wikis in education. What do we do in education with wikis? Actually, those are different ways to use it. And uh, for a paper a couple of years ago, I made this distinction. In class, you can use Wikipedia as a knowledge source. You tell the students, go to Wikipedia, read the article. OK. Meta reception means that you use it as an object to talk about, to analyze what is the background of, of Wikipedia, how does it work, where can you click, what, etc. And the third is the modification. So most people think about Wikipedia and education, it's about writing articles in the classroom. Yes, but not always. And often for the third, you need the second. Yeah? You have to talk about the, the, uh, what, how a wiki works. All right, just an example. I have here some questions you can discuss about or you can talk about when it comes to meta reception and AI. Questions that you can talk about with students and Shani in the panel discussion said, well, sometimes students know much more about the apps that are existing. Why not asking them? And for me, always the most important thing is a good discussion. And if Wikipedia becomes richer for a couple of dozens of articles, OK, it's nice. But the real important thing is talking to the students, have a good discussion. Wiki elements. So for my book, I made a wiki model to identify the relevant elements. And if I think about wikis, I analyze them. Maybe I compare one Wikipedia language version to another language version. Then I ask myself, um, did I think about all of the elements? And you, you see I like colorful charts. I didn't study art, but... Uh, and you see, see the contributor is a very important person, and some parts relate to the wiki itself, but also outside elements can be extremely important to a wiki. Don't worry, I'm not walking through with you through all of this, but to give you examples. Some questions, and I, I let you read yourself and pause my talking. So you see, in the outside world, so the world consists of objects we can talk about, experts, scientists talk about or write about these topics, and they produce sources that can be a good book, a monography, or a journalistic uh, article. And we, we, it, we use it as contributors for Wikipedia, etc. Yes, and it can be that we in Wikipedia, sorry, we, I'm, I'm a neutral scientist, but we in Wikipedia, we decide we have certain ideas about what is a reliable source, and if a newspaper starts using too much AI for saving money, it's no longer re reliable. But your students come to class and they want to use that, and they don't, they don't understand why may we make a fuss about it. So if you talk about AI and Wikipedia, think also about the sources. Or collaboration. And just as, as one example only. We say that we have multilingual wikis, like MetaWiki and Wikidata and Wikimedia Commons, they are multilingual. But de facto, the lingua franca is English, of course. 
Well, in Facebook, you can get an automatic translation by the click of a button. We don't have that in Wikimedia Commons. I don't know, should we have this? But this is something that you can uh, discuss or uh, advise for newcomers. Often a newcomer, a new, a new, people, new people want to write something in Wikipedia and they get problems and people give them, read this policy page. They don't want to do that. Maybe there are smarter ways to give them advice. What exactly was the problem with your edit? And what you can do better? And not reading 10 pages of policy pages, asking people and bleh, forget it. So this again is just an example how I use my wiki model to tackle a topic and not lose overview. If you want to talk about a wiki about the relevant law and rules. For every, each and every wiki, you must analyze these levels. Macro level is a whole society, and this is just an example. Government, law, copyright law is relevant for wikis. Meso and exo level, so you see this is a terminology I took from the literature. Uh, maybe there is a council for spelling in your language, and you, well, it's not the law, but you should follow it, otherwise people won't take you serious. The micro level in our example is the Wikimedia Foundation, think of the terms of use, very important. And then see the community of contributors and every wiki that can have their own rules within these constraints. And what I actually forgot, forgot here, uh, a chapter, yes, a chapter that is funding activities also can have the opinion, well, we don't like AI because it's not sustainable, it uses a lot of uh, electricity. You know, maybe it's against our principles. So, and again, you can ask yourself what to make with AI. And again, this is a tool not to overlook where you have to look when you, well, the terms of use. And many researchers who have no Wikipedia experience, they wouldn't think about what kind of rules the foundation could have. Writing process. I'm going to talk to you about, partially about a PhD thesis of Kerstin Kallas, who analyzed German Wikipedia and the writing processes. And she is analyzing something that many Wikipedians and other people, they do in their head, and they do not consciously distinguish between different processes and, and phases of writing. You know, we, we do it intuitively. But uh, I have here an overview, what she is uh, telling about, and I just uh, summarize, so on the left it's about why would you start an article? What is your motive for that? The planning and structuring, the actual writing, but also copy editing. You can do it individually on Microsoft Word and then put it into the wiki. Or maybe you want to discuss with others on the talk page. Um, we should write this article. Um, can we talk about what, how to structure it? And it actually never happens. Huh? People don't discuss it. And uh, copy editing, and yes, and then on, on the right there, there's a recursive practice. You evaluate it, you look at it, and then you go back to the writing and the copy editing. So, um, yes, and what she means by controversial and destructive negotiation, you all know by yourself. But I simplified this for this purpose here. Yes, starting an article, planning, structuring, text generation, reception, and you have a recursive practice, you go back to an earlier phase, and, and in, in a wiki, maybe you do it all the time. We, we say that wiki content is dynamic, yes? And then the co-contributors, the other people, the other annoying people on the wiki, they can interfere at every phase again and again. And again, you can ask yourself, so this, this was made to analyze collaborative writing, but you can also ask yourself, where is AI coming in? And these are just two examples. I'm sure if you think about it, you can think of other examples where AI can come in. And, uh, well, we have time for discussions or we have time for AI images? It's your choice. Is it well, I always do stable diffusion because I am a, a cheap guy. I don't want to pay, spend money for. But the results, what uh, Neta does with Midjourney is much better, yes. 
Okay, AI images. So I, I, I'm a historian, I'm not much about theory, but there's this Flusser guy, he had a whole theory and I'm just summarizing it. I don't have to repeat it here, but there are two different things. An image can be made traditionally by humans or it is technical or automatic. And to give you an example, there are images you make with human imagination, so the human brain is coming in, it's going via the brain, and yes, it's stable diffusion. And uh, the other thing is so-called automatic. It's an automatic light goes into your camera on the sensor, you know, that's te a technical image. A photography is a technical image. But, you know these paper silhouettes, these paper cutouts, the portraits, 18th century, 19th century, very popular? Is that imagination? Or is it automatics? Who of you thinks, oh, that's imagination? It's your use, human brain you use for that. And who of you, one or two, who thinks it's automatics? You do it in an automatic way. Ah, okay, so you're reluctant, you're not quite certain, and you're totally right if you're not certain, because you can do it either way. You have real artists who look at a person, please your profile, and then they, then they cut it instantly, and other people, they put you in front of a wall, and then they have light and shadow and a paper, and they draw it with the pencil, and then later they cut it out. Yes, actually, it's, it can be both. And we will have, when AI is used for Wikipedia, all the time we will think, do I have to mention that I used AI? What tools did I use? Well, did you use it as a tool, like spelling check? You don't mention it. Or do you use it for more than that? And we will have a lot of discussions in the future. What do you have to declare and what you don't have to declare? And this, now, Mozart, eh, the famous Austrian composer. Austrian. So we have these images, which one to use? I don't know, I, I, I didn't know the guy, and uh, we need an art historian. Uh, art historians are great, they could tell us that uh, contemporary said, well, this image was made in his lifetime by a professional portraitist, so this may be better than the other one that was made when he was dead for 100 years. So maybe, okay. So which one of the modes, do I need an expert to tell me? But the issue is that I don't know there was a series called Black Mirror, hmm? Oh, I, like this okay, oh, I didn't see Black Mirror. That would be, uh, at the end of the day, it would be the question, yeah, you, which one to, yeah, to do, and if we reconstruct a Mozart image in a video, I don't know, then who is deciding which one to take? And therefore, I go back to my book, From the World to the Wiki. What happens from the world to the wiki? On the left side, you see the world to be described, then the level of primary sources, secondary, and Wikipedia is a kind of tertiary source, you know the terminology, and uh, yes, Wikipedia is at the end of that, you know, and we want reliable sources, and somewhere there must be an expert, a journalist, a scholar, writing a book, etc. you know this. So the thing is now, when I upload an image to Wikipedia, uh, to Wikimedia Commons, Yes, what does it mean? It means I take the image, I go to that village, I take the image. And then I, I upload it to Wikimedia Commons, and I say in the metadata, this is this windmill, registration number, this monument, and this village, etc. Can I say that? Am I the expert on that? Where's the expert coming in? You see, there are cases that we absolutely accept it, that the contributor is her own expert. And we don't always accept it, but sometimes, you know? So where, the, where does the expert come in? And now I ask you this. Who wants to express her opinion? What do you think about the gentleman there? Who is this? Do you recognize him? Oh, sorry, I'm too old. This is Robert Mitchum, 1950s, 1960s, famous American actor. 
I believe it is quite safe to say most people who saw a movie with Robert Mitchum can confirm this is how the guy looks, yes? I'm a human being, I can identify, identify people. Two millions of human evolution taught me I can identify people, yes? I don't need an expert for this. But then you have this temple, a reconstruction of a specific Greek temple. I think I need an expert who can confirm that is looking something like that. Yes, thank you. And the last example, well, you, yes, uh, you could use this as an example for several things. For example, a windmill, a typical Dutch windmill for the article about Dutch windmills. What do I want as a first image? Do I want an actual photograph of a specific concrete windmill? Or do I want a neutral image, how a windmill looks in general without being specifically in that village, in that country? And then students come to you and for them it's normal that they illustrate their papers, symbolic images, stock photo, they, they do it this way. Are we happy with that? Do you accept this in Wikipedia? Robert Mitchum is this? Yes, and in English Wikipedia, I have the impression people prefer fair use images, and we don't do that in Germany. So uh, there's also a cultural difference. So this is what, what I brought with me. This is my little presentation to give you a certain idea. If you want to, uh, to learn more about my book, it is in German, but I have a user page in English Wikipedia and I have a link and I have translated some chapters to English and I would be very interested in your opinion. Yes, so, and now shoot. If, if you could uh, help me with that, I don't use Telegram, but it would be very nice. Yes? So if there's time for questions yes, or... Yes, yeah? Please. Working properly. Uh, it's a great presentation. This is definitely one of the most important topics. It's the technology of the future. Uh, and if you mentioned previously uh, automatic translations, I mean, they are already used, not so widely, but uh, they are a great example where AI is used uh, and uh, it contributes to um, beating the language barrier between people who don't have any uh, common languages. So what is your opinion on that? I have a friend who is a professor of linguistics, and in the 1990s, we talked about automatic translations, and he was very skeptical. He says, all the time you have another project, and they say it's much better, and in a couple of years, we are so fine, he was skeptical. Well, nowadays, we have quite good automatic translation, but still, I would not publish something in a foreign language that I cannot check myself. Yes, I use AI to improve my emails in English. I hope in the last weeks you all noticed that my emails improved drastically in the English language. But I don't trust it fully, you know? I always have something to correct. And it's the same with ChatGPT. You can use it for language reasons, not for knowledge, but for language. And even still, you have to check it by yourself. And only then it is your text. You know, and so you see this, I hope I got your question a little bit, and I could imagine if the translations are good enough, they can mean a lot to many people if the language is supported. Have you heard about Grammarly, and is this how yes. it works? Yes, uh, because I got uh, advertisements on my YouTube account, and then there was another tool that said we are better than Grammarly and we are cheaper. But this is all I know about that, but you know, it's not... ChatGDP is absolutely new something, but you had spelling checks and grammar checks, and it's a slow ev evolution. You're totally right, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Nita. Published a very beautiful video lecture. It's not a lecture, it's a interact, it's very, he has beautifully illustrated how AI-generated content can be used on 
uh, Wikipedia with reference to images. I have put uh, the link to the video uh, on the Telegram group right now. So please have a look. Uh, it's very informative and it also kind of summarizes very much related, very much the dis debates and discussions surrounding generative AI on Wikimedia Commons. So thank you. Please yeah. check that out. Yeah. Very kind. Thank you. And you can use, uh, my, my user page is Z-I-K-O-Z-I-K-O. Yes? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much.